All right, so for day one of our Android apps development part two, we're going to talk a few conceptual things first, and then we're going to get into actual coding and such. Um, go ahead and open up your web browser. Open up any web browser, and we'll go to the website developer.android.com. I'm going to open another window or tab, and also I'm going to load up developer.apple.com, and I'll open up one more window and go to developer.windows.com. Which I guess actually goes now to developer.microsoft.com. I pull up these three websites because these are the, the three official portals to learn all you need to learn to create apps for all the major players in mobile or desktop apps. Developer.android.com is where you go learn all about all of the code you need to learn and write to create Android apps. Developer.apple.com is where you go to learn about all of the code and get the software to develop iOS apps. And Developer.microsoft.com is where you go to, to learn the code and get the software uh, to create apps for Windows devices like Windows phones, Surface tablets, Windows 10, etc. So three huge websites with their own language that you would need to become a pro in to be able to make an app for all the ecosystems. There's of course Blackberry still around, there's Firefox operating system, there's Amazon, and all of them have their own. You know, if you have a Kindle, it's a version of Android, but it's, a it's Amazon's version. And guess what? If you go to developer.amazon.com, you can learn all about the specific details of the Kindle devices. But basically, for Android, we would need to learn the Java programming language. For iOS, we need to learn the... Traditionally it was Objective-C and now they're going over to Swift. If you wanted any sort of Windows device, you would then have their C-sharp. So three huge complete languages with their own set of syntax and code and software and debuggers and device testers and all of that. So if you only wanted to make Android apps, no problem. Just take a few months to learn Java, and then you'll have a great uh, Android app. And studies show that even though Android has the larger market share, it's got about 80% market share. More developers make more money from iOS, which has about 19% market share. And then Windows and other have about 1%. Windows phones and mobile devices, but Windows computers, that's got about 90% market share. Windows, you know, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, Windows on the desktop, that's got about 90% market share. The Mac has about 5% market share. But on mobile, these are the players. Got mobile ecosystems. And we've got desktop ecosystems. So we have Windows, Mac, Linux. Uh, and there we've got about 90% market share. Six, five or six or seven. Let's let's be generous and say seven percent, and then the rest is you know Linux on the desktop. Yes, Linux is on other embedded systems and such, but on the desktop. So if you were going to make apps for Windows desktop devices, that'd be the biggest piece of the pie. Um, Mac is a smaller piece, but perhaps it has more mind share. Perhaps those you know Mac laptops are more famous than a Windows laptop, although ecosystem-wise it's not as big. As for Android, 
and mobile devices. Again, iOS perhaps has the more cachet, the mind share, the fame. Um, you know, you see more ads and celebrities or whatever with an iOS device, but it's a smaller piece of the pie. Android is larger, but studies show that developers often make more money from iOS versions of their apps than Android versions, which is unfortunate because even at 99 cents per app, we still scoff at that. We were so used to being able to download anything anytime for free that now that us that are developers and we're putting all this hard work and time into our apps, someone doesn't even want to pay 99 cents for it. But over on iOS, people are a little bit more apt to do that. Well, if I had just spent all my time learning only Java, I now need to learn a brand new language, Objective-C, which now might be superseded by Swift. So I have to learn another language to convert my app, which I had first set up in Java, to go over to iPhone. And if I wanted to get over to the Windows mobile version of things, that's another language. But if I wanted to make a desktop version of my app for running on Windows 90%, it's another language. So this class, we're using HTML plus CSS plus JavaScript equals any device. In our class, we are using technology We're using languages and software and frameworks and such that will allow us to use the common web languages to target any device. And then it's not that it's going to be a website. It will be a real app that you can download from the real app stores. You can pull up your Kindle and that app will be there. You can go over to your Mac app store and the app will be there. It'll be a real downloadable full featured app with all of the features of, a, of an app like the camera, checking into your contacts on your device, vibration of the device sound, and all of that that a website can't do. So it is going to be real apps. Basically, we have a sort of a wrapper, and we'll get to all the details, of course. It's going to be a wrapper which translates these web languages into Java when it's on an Android. These languages translated to Objective-C when it's on an iPhone. These languages translated to C Sharp when it's on a Windows platform. All behind the scenes automatically. It's just us writing the usual HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The, the middleman or the magic that makes it happen is something called Cordova. So on the website, they're announcing Android 7 Nougat is out there. Learn all about how to make Android apps over on Apple. Uh, iOS 10 just came out. It's talking about download the software and set it all up. And then on Windows, Windows 10 Anniversary Edition just came out. So this stuff's always evolving. And if we go in the traditional route, we would need to learn a particular language for each platform. We are going to learn instead. Let's go to the website cordova.apache.org. cordova.apache.org. How many of you before this class had heard of PhoneGap that had not taken my class previously? How many of you before this class had heard of Cordova? How many of you before this class had heard of Taco? Not the taco that we eat, but Taco. Okay. So let's look at cordova.apache.org. This is <coughs> mobile apps with HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Target multiple platforms with one code base, free and open source. It tells you about that it's reusable code, it works offline, online, dev access native APIs, how do you set it up. You don't have to do any of this setup just yet, so don't get too far ahead. I'm just showing general concepts. 
you know, here's apps that have been created in this method. All the documentation will be here, various other tools, um, there's Taco and such. But this is where we're going to, this is going to be our Bible where we're going to reference it throughout the course. This is what we're going to keep coming back to. We need to write the right code to access the camera. Well, it doesn't matter if the camera on an iPhone or the camera on a Nexus tablet. We're going to write the same code, but we need to learn the code. We get it from cordova.apache.org. Let's take a quick look at PhoneGap.com. PhoneGap is Cordova's cousin. It's a different version of the same underlying concept, but just like open source, what happens with open source is that there's an original bit of code and someone forks it, someone copies it to make it different, and now there's two versions of it. And perhaps one gets better than the other, who knows, and they merge together. You know, open source, it's a constantly changing and evolving thing. And so PhoneGap is a different version of Cordova. The same sort of thing, learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to create multi-platform apps. It's just a different version. This is Adobe's version. Adobe, it's a long story, but actually Adobe originally bought the first version of Cordova, which was called something else. They made their version called PhoneGap. Then they gave away a free version over to the Apache Foundation. So now there's that version of it. and um, they do different things. We'll explore the details later. So the one is free and the one is not free? They're both free, but the Cordova version is more free. Because we'll see later that the Adobe version is free, but then at a certain point, for certain features, you might want to pay for them. Not required, but you may want to pay for them. We'll see what those features are a little later. But we'll be focusing on the Cordova version. And whatever code we learn with Cordova still applies over with PhoneGap. It's all underlying the same technology, just kind of different branding and marketing and such. The thing with open source that people always try to figure out is how can I make money off of it? Yes, I'm giving away my code, but how can I make money off of it? And Adobe has these various then products that people can pay for, whereas the Cordova ones are going to be all this free stuff. With the free stuff, it's a little bit more do-it-yourself but it's all free. With the PhoneGap version, they guide you a bit more and help you a bit more, but not for free. We'll look at one more. Let's look at, let's go to the website taco.tools. taco.tools. I was going to redirect you to a longer address. We'll go to taco.tools. And then this is a different version of Cordova. This is Microsoft's version of Cordova. It actually goes to taco.visualstudio.com. This is Microsoft's version. They forked it. They made a copy of it. They made their own tweaks on it. The big tweak here is that you can use Visual Studio. How many of you have ever used Visual Studio before? A few people. So if you've used it and you're comfortable with that software, you can use Cordova inside of it. Their version is called Taco, which is Tools for Apache Cordova. It's Microsoft's version of Cordova. It's Taco. This is the one we're going to focus on because there's Download Cordova, there's Download PhoneGap, and there's Download Taco. All of them eventually get you to the same result, which is to take a web project and make it a mobile project. In the middle, there's a lot of differentiation. And as I said, I've been doing this for three years, and I'm finding that the taco version is one of the most polished versions. Because the good thing about open source is that, you know, it's open and everyone can contribute. But the bad thing about open source is that it's open and everyone can contribute, meaning that it can get off the rails, it can get off track, it could be infighting inside the project and it doesn't progress, that someone has an idea to make the code like this, but another person has it to make it like that, and then there's another fork. So now there's Cordova and Cordova Jr. Well, the taco version 
seems to smooth out a lot of the rough edges, and that's the one we're using in this class. Because as I said, this class, honestly, it's complicated and difficult. I have handouts for you. Whereas last month I didn't have handouts because HTML is HTML is HTML. You can get resources and information about it everywhere. But here, this is a big task. What can you use to take what you already know to then convert it to all the platforms? Cordova slash phone gap slash taco. And therefore, I have handouts for you, which I just tested yesterday, and I always update every semester. And I think I've got all of the things covered because behind the scenes, a lot's going to happen. But on the surface, the user has your app. Behind the scenes for you, it's a lot of setup. The easiest way is just learn Java and Android Studio, and you're on Android. But then you have to learn Xcode and Objective-C to get on iOS. And then you have to learn Visual Studio and C Sharp to get on Windows. So if you want a universal code base, there's kind of a lot of pieces to this puzzle. And that's why I have handouts for you. Before we get to the handouts, which have everything spelled out, we're going to do this the hard way. And then with the handouts, it'll make more sense. Any questions before we do that? Um, if you want to see examples, I forgot about this, if you want to see examples of the previous student work, if you go to Amazon.com and search for MySDCE, one word, that's the example app that everyone has made on a previous semester. You can go see their real apps that they've made throughout the semesters. You can download it for real on your Android or Kindle device. And test it out. You can see people's real store listings here. Joy's was her version, and you can see screenshots. And it's going to look familiar in what we started last month. But it'll also have new things such as databases, the ability to save data more complexly than local storage, which we talked about last time. We're going to deal with kind of a real database here where you'll say be able to save lots of kinds of data retrieve it edit it delete it etc and you can check out other students works we have to create store listings and icons and all of that. We'll get to that because if you're the app developer, if you're the only app developer in your app development company, it's just you and yourself, well, you have to do the programming, you have to do the graphics, you have to do the copywriting, which is the text of your, <coughs> of your app, you have to do the tech support, you have to do the promotion. You have to do it all if you're your own developer. A lot of times if you learn how to make an app, they're just going to show you the code. They don't explain, okay, how to then compile it and sign it as a developer, upload it to the app stores, beta test it, promote it, release a version 2. We're going to cover all of that. That's why it's a three-part sequence. And um, the way we're going to do this is going to be very unfamiliar for many people. It may be somewhat familiar for some of us that have been using computers a while. And again, I've got handouts. For the moment, we'll do it the hard way, but it's not going to be as hard as you think. Go ahead and close your windows. Go to your Start menu. And, and in your Start uh, search here, type Command. And you should get a result that says Command Prompt launch command prompt. If you've used computers for a while, this may be familiar. If you haven't, this is the command prompt. This is what computers were 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago. Commands that you type to give to the computer. We're not going to be using a pretty 
IDE. We're not going to be using some software where you click and drag and select menu items. We're going to be typing commands in the command prompt, which is very different than most of us are used to. How many of you have used the command prompt recently? Well, that's pretty impressive, actually. Within the last week? Okay. Within the last year? Okay. So, how many of you have never used the command prompt? You don't want to admit it? That's okay. So, the command prompt here is we're going to be typing in commands and then they will process and then they will be done. This is very efficient way to do things because we're with a big old software package like Eclipse or Visual Studio or Xcode, you need, you know, two gigabytes just to run, just to launch it. And then you're going to need to find the right menu item. Where did that go? What do I click on? What does that icon mean? But in the command prompt, if you know the five or six commands that we need, we just type the command, press enter, and it does it. And yes, it's going to be a little bit alien in the beginning. But again, I've got handouts. So for the moment, um, we'll, we'll follow along here just to kind of get acclimated here. Mine says here, OK, I'm running Windows. C users instructor. I'm running my instructor account. Yours probably says C backslash user backslash lab. You're on your lab account. When you're in the little cursor here in the prompt, type CD space desktop, capital D, CD space desktop. I'll explain what all of this means, of course. But for the moment, CD space desktop, press enter. You should now say you're on the C drive in the user folder, in your lab folder on the desktop. Well, obviously on Windows, my desktop is right there. I can see my icons. But in the command prompt, I don't see anything until I type DIR. Type DIR and then press enter. That means something, I'll explain them. But type DIR, press enter. This is okay. You're on the desktop. There's your Adobe Reader link. There's your syllabus if you copied it. There's your documents folder, Internet Explorer. There's etc. There's your desktop. Right? I'm seeing documents shortcut icon, and then I'm seeing documents shortcut link. So we're going to be using this command prompt to type a few commands to run, to compile our code instead of something like Eclipse or Visual Studio or Android Studio or Xcode. And the way that we will do this is just type some basic commands. All of that software over at cordova.apache.org, all of that's already installed. You don't need to install it. I'll have handouts and explanation on how to do this at home in a moment. But it's already installed, so we can simply use it. Let's do this. Type taco space create space my app. Notice it's all lowercase at the moment. I'm typing the taco command. I'm using the taco software to create an app called my app. There are more nuances than this, but for the moment, taco space create space my app. Press enter. Nothing happens until you press enter. It'll think about it for a moment, and depending on some factors, it may happen quickly or slowly. I already set it up a little while earlier, so for mine it happened pretty fast, but eventually it'll say, name of your project, hello taco or something, ID something, location, my app, kit taco 3, creating a new Cordova project, success, your project using the blank template is ready on your desktop. Well look at that, on my desktop I have a brand new folder, my app. So I'm still going to be able to open that folder and look into it, which we'll do a little later, but that has been created with the command prompt. Taco gives me some quick tips. Right now, this is a blank project that doesn't know. Is it an Android project? Is it an iPhone project? What kind of project is it? We've simply created it. 
what I need to do next is change the directory to your project and then add a platform. So it's waiting for the next command here. Let's type cd space my app. That's the exact same that I typed previously. If you called it taco create my amazing project, you would type cd my amazing project, the name of the folder. But if you called it the same folder as me, cd space my app. Press enter. It should then tell you you're on C drive, users, lab, desktop, app. If it says error, you called your folder something else. Type dir to see the list of your folders, and then type the proper folder, cd my app. That would be the same as if I had double-clicked the folder on the desktop, but we're not going to use that interface yet. We're going to use the command prompt. I'm in my app. My tips were saying, okay, I change into that directory, change into that folder. I then add a platform. Taco, space, platform, space, add, space, Android. We're going to make this project an Android project. Press enter. It'll do some processing. It'll connect over to the Cordova mothership. It'll download some software. It might take a moment the very first time you do it. Subsequent times would be faster. You're going to get this feedback, which looks like a lot of gibberish, but you might want to read it once in a while, and I'll point out things in it when necessary. You get a bunch of feedback. I see something about Android Target, and it says installing a plugin and so forth, and then success platform Android added. If it didn't work, I'll help you in one moment. But we created a blank project. We told it it's about to be an Android project. Let's do taco build taco space build space Android. Let's compile it. Let's put this code together ready for deployment. We're going to compile it. Taco space build space Android, press enter. This one you should. What's that? What was the command you used before that? Taco platform add Android. <coughs> take a moment to process. We get a lot of feedback there. Well, hopefully you get some feedback. Mine says it processed it eventually built successful in 16 seconds. It's a very simple project. Eventually when it gets more complex, I wouldn't be surprised that it says total build time 1 minute 30 seconds, total build time 5 minutes, depending on the complexity of your project. This very basic template, in my case, took 16 seconds. And if you kind of browse that a little bit, you get a lot of feedback and something about, I don't know, Java Home, Android Home, Cordova Libraries, up to date, blah, blah, blah. I'll talk about this in detail later. We have built our Android version of our project. Let's do taco space emulate space Android. I don't have a device, or I don't have one plugged in. I can't check it on a real device yet. I'm going to run it on an emulator, a virtual device. So let's do taco space emulate space Android, press enter. That'll process. Perhaps you get another pop-up. I saw something about no emulator specified. I get a pop-up, some stuff. I get a little window of a virtual device loading up. This one usually takes a little while because we're running a little computer inside your computer. These things in our pockets are a computer. CPU, RAM, storage, processing. All of the features that make up a computer, this is in our pocket. Now I'm running a little computer in my main computer. So the first time this happens, it might be a little slow. It also might be slow on mine because I'm running my recorder and a bunch of other things. But hopefully eventually Android starting, it's like a real little device booting up. Stuff happening there. 
didn't have any if anyone has any trouble at this point. Let's see if they are working. So just like anything computer related, the more RAM you have, the better CPU they have you have, the more um, better your result is. The much better your result is. If it looks like it freezes, don't worry, just wait a little bit more. Eventually, hopefully, what you get is this device loads up. This taco app that we created would then get installed on the device, and it'll say Cordova device ready. Okay. That, is, that is the template project we created. If you see the little Cordova mascot, the little cube robot thing, that's the Cordova mascot. It's taking a little longer, but Eventually, if you see the Cordova mascot device ready, you've got an app, an Android app. Imagine mine loaded up, but did everyone get the Cordova mascot device ready? Yes? So everyone got something to load up. Mine didn't, anticlimactic, but that's okay. Yours did, which is good. So if you want to, if you want to um, play with that, it's a real device. Do you see at the bottom a home button? Click the home button. That should take you to the home screen of the device. Uh, try swiping around. We don't have touch screen, so don't touch the monitor, but if we had a touch screen, you'd be able to actually touch the monitor. You have to use your mouse, but try to click and drag like you're swiping, you know, to click with your mouse to tap the device, swipe those screens around, click the, click the, the, the circular button at the very bottom with six dots. That's your app drawer. Again, I'll show you on mine hopefully in a moment. But on a, on a real device, my real device looks a lot like that testing device. You should have a central app drawer with all the apps loading up. You know, kind of swipe around there, see if uh, you can get that to work. Try to see if you can find the web browser. There is a web browser in there. Click that and you'll see you really are connecting to the real internet. It's very close to a real device, except it doesn't make it, it does it doesn't have a phone for real, and you can't make prank calls on it. But you can go on uh, the various web browsers and such. Question? Yeah, my question was about the dialers. The dialers won't work because everyone's gonna make prank calls. <laughs> So um, text messages don't quite work either. Any of that like real carrier stuff doesn't work, but there's apps in it like a camera and the web browser, <coughs> settings, email. Do you see on the edge here there's also some of these controls? Volume up, volume down. Well, I can rotate a real device. I've got a rotation icon as well. I've got a camera button. If I have a camera button as well, um, here we go. It's coming up. I've got the power button to put it into sleep mode and to wake it again. There we go. Connected to device. Device ready. <laughs> so my Cordova template loaded up. It's there. Uh, glowing. I can hit the, the central button right there. If you haven't used an Android device, that's your home button. There's a back button. There's all your running apps. If you hit home, it should take you back to the home screen. So then you'll 
click and drag to swipe. There's no extra screens there, but you can tap the apps down here. There's various apps that you can swipe around. <coughs> Go to your web browser. So if you don't have a real device for this class, you can use a virtual device. And it works pretty well to kind of see what does your project look like. But it's not perfect because if we talk about vibration, if we, if we make your app vibrate when there's an error, the computer's not going to vibrate. The GPS is not the best because it's tied to your actual computer. Depending on the hardware of your computer, this may be slow. You know, I see that it's... I tap on a few things and there's a little bit of lag. But I can go over here to the web browser and do a Google search. You know, I click the box there and I type, you know, Android. And it's actually going to connect to a real websites. I just did a search there. and So it's real. Go back to the home screen. Rotate and so forth. There's some lag. But all of this came from a few commands, like five commands in the command prompt. Um, I'm going to leave this emulator running for a moment. But if you go back to the command prompt, you, you might have gotten two of them. Uh, don't close either one of them. One is to launch the emulator. Don't close that, or it closes your emulator. You can move it to the side or something. But if you go back to the command prompt where we had typed the original taco command, type this, taco space platform. I'm going to very quickly stop saying space because it's tedious, but the taco command and then some, the taco software and some command. The taco software platform command. So if I say taco platform, that means taco space platform. I'm not going to, space, I'm not going to say space over and over. But if you do Taco Space Platform, it'll say, we've currently installed in our project Android. And these are the other available platforms we can add to it. Amazon, Windows Phone 8, Blackberry, Firefox, etc. WebOS, Windows, Windows 8, etc. Which one's missing? iPhone, iOS. We don't have iOS simply because we don't have the hardware for it. We need a Mac to make iOS apps. If I had a Mac, I wouldn't be able to make Windows apps, vice versa. So you see, Taco is very cool because it lets you make apps for any platform if you have the hardware. This is where Adobe comes in with their PhoneGap version. They will gladly sell you a service that will convert your app to all the platforms, even if you don't have a Mac. We'll come back to that later. But for the moment, that's why this class is focusing on Android development. We have Windows computers where we can run on an Android device. And if I do get this worked out with the school, you will be able to borrow an Android tablet. If you don't have an Android tablet or phone, you can use the emulator. We have another way to test our projects. Let's do taco platform space add browser. I could do on a Mac taco platform add iOS and our project would have the Android code as well as the iOS code. To this project we've added the Android template so to speak and we're about to add something called browser so taco platform add browser if I type again taco space platform this shows me what are the platforms installed in the project what are the platforms available you should see that Android is installed and browser is installed taco space build space browser. Let's compile the browser version of our project. Like earlier we did taco build
build Android. Let's compile the Android version of our code. Let's compile the browser version. Press Enter. It's much faster. Then we'll do taco. Taco emulate browser. Right there. Taco emulate browser. That, that should open Google Chrome browser. And it brings up again the, uh, the, the Cordova Hello Taco device ready template. So we would still be able to test our apps in a web browser. We're not going to be uh, double clicking the HTML file anymore, however. We're going to be doing something like Taco Emulate Browser because now this is the app version of the project. It's no longer an HTML website. It's no longer a simple HTML project. It is an Android project or an iPhone project that is running HTML. Um, we're probably very curious, so I'm going to minimize some of this. Let's look inside of that My App folder. You can minimize and we'll go to the the safety of the desktop here the, with the wind with the mouse and such let's go ahead and double click my app folder we're going to look at all of these folders and what's inside of them in a moment but uh, some of the stuff okay open up www folder index html css javascript images what we talked about last month. Right click index.html, edit with notepad. It's HTML. It's what we talked about last month. But it's wrapped up in Taco. This, of course, is fully editable, and we will explore this later. But at the moment, We'll look at what all of this code means, body tags and all of that. That's all familiar. Connecting to device, you may have noticed before the Cordova mascot appeared, briefly it said connecting to device. If I wanted that to say something else, such as one moment please, obviously I just changed that. It's a simple paragraph, a P tag, and I say one moment please. So that's what will appear while the app is loading. This actual image and other text back in the folder, if you go back to the WW folder, in the images folder, there's the Cordova graphic. Um, let's see what happens if we right click edit. Not edit with fireworks, but try right click Cordova, that Cordova graphic, right click, edit. I hope that opens up simply, yeah, plain old, plain old paint. So nothing special to do here, maybe just um, give it a little happy face, angry happy face, suave happy face. I'm just going to change it a little, and then I'm going to save it. <coughs> so I changed that graphic. I just played around with it a little. I changed the, the text over here. One moment, please. Let's go back to the folder, and this time go over to your scripts folder. There's an index.js file. Right-click index.js in the scripts folder. Edit with Notepad. I see on line 13, device ready. That's the text that appears there. Element.innerHTML, that sounds should hopefully sound a little familiar. But if it's not, don't worry, line 13 in the quotes. Welcome. I'm just changing a little bit. I'm going to explain what all of this stuff does, of course. 
throughout the course of the course. But for the moment, line 13, if you change that to some other message, in theory, the message will change. Now I do need to change I do need to save both the index and the the HTML and the JS file. Remember that we have on Notepad the Save All button. If you edit more than one file, you might want to remember to save all. So I've made a change to the graphic, I've made a change to the HTML and the JavaScript. It did not change automatically in my, in my project because I have not recompiled it. It's new code that needs to be recompiled, and then I need to run it in the browser again, or when we get, or in the, in the device. Eventually, when we get to a real device, we'll be able to see that in here. But to see the result of my changes, go back to the command prompt. This is still running the browser. We did taco emulate browser. It's still thinking about the browser. On your keyboard, hold Control C to cancel the last thing that was happening. So on the keyboard, press Control, then press C, press and hold Control, then C. It says, Would you like to terminate the patch job? Press Y for yes, and then enter. This was still running the browser version of the project. We have to terminate that. Control C, press Y, and then enter goes back to the command prompt blinking taco build Android we need to recompile we need to recompile the latest changes this time should be faster than before probably because very little changed two lines of code and one graphic Mine was done in 8 seconds, previously 16 seconds. I want to see it on my virtual device again. Anyone remember how to get it back onto the virtual device? Taco emulate Android, yes. Technically, we can just do Taco emulate Android. It will do a compiling anyway, just in case. We did Taco Build Android just to show you we could compile an Android version, a browser version, an iOS version. But if you do Taco Emulate Android, it will do a build first and then deploy. So Taco Emulate Android, wait for that, and then hopefully then you get your graphic changed. It says something else besides waiting for device, and then instead of device ready, it'll say whatever message you wrote. Here it comes. Decompile, reinstalling. One moment, please. Welcome. Graphic looks weird, but I changed it, and this is welcome. I forgot to say with transparency. That's okay. But we changed the template project a little bit. <coughs> So this is uh, what this class will focus heavily on. We're still going to write HTML, CSS, JavaScript. But now we're going to use the command prompt to type a few certain commands. We really only need to know like six commands. And then we're going to see our projects. We're of course going to talk about how do I get that project on my real device. That's coming day two. We're going to talk about then adding more features, adding different platforms, tapping into the camera, making the app vibrate when it first starts up, making a sound play when you enter your name, saving stuff to a database, getting pretty advanced, all of that part too. Then we're going to talk about, okay, we've got a great app, we need to, de we need to set up a developer's account over at Google so that we're a real developer. We need to get a developer certificate, compile and sign our app, and actually put it up on the App Store. Promote it, um, release a version 2, all that good stuff. So we have to learn how to crawl before we can learn how to walk, before we can learn how to run. Last month was crawling. We're going to be walking this month. It's a lot to take in. I have handouts. I'll give them to you right after the break. 
7.20. We'll take a break until 7.30. If you had any trouble here, call me over. After the break, I'll start to give you these handouts. We'll put this together much more cohesively, and then we'll get going.